What happens when you level a lot? Well, you still need to level some more. Yeah. We got the wind sword. Our final sword. Of the five elementals. Yes, a fairy is elemental. I still haven't turned that in. In fact, I don't think you can turn in the one you first apprenticed with. With an exception of this one. Apparently, Taz is trapped in this sword. So we should probably go to Xandor and find out how to free him. From a wind wizard, of course. And hopefully get the wind of magic. Wind magic, which is pretty freaking awesome. Used for various movements. Hello there, young lady. Yes, it is truly amazing. And I should probably find my wizard. I should not deal with you because all your equipment is inferior to what I have. Oh, one quick one while I get a map up for myself. That's inverted. I am at Xandor, right? I am at Xandor, right? Yes. I should get that checked. That is the Sword of Magi. And finally, Apprenticed in the Art of Wind. And now I have to go get back to Granville for more information. Although I pretty much know what I must do. I wish that life was peaceful too. I have more than enough gold now. It's a good thing too. That means a lot of grinding. I still have to do a lot of grinding because the max level after all is 20. Excuse me one quick moment while I get my leveled up butt to Granville. Ah, Granville. The town's so nice. They had all five losers stop by. But am I truly wise? Not wise enough. Yeah, I'm gonna need 6,500. To total experience. Just get next level. Combine the sky magics. Hmm. I know about the mysterious fairy magic. Torres? Toro. That sounds familiar for some reason. And I'm not saying anything, but I think it might be a spoiler. But Torres is what we really, really want. And trust me, we really, really want. So I should probably mm -hmm. experiment with my new magics, the magic of the wind. Farming while I get rid of this paralyzation real quick. And as we know, anything that starts with a wand is of course an attack spell. The simplest wind spell. Doing a decent amount of that damage. But what if I go overboard? Whoop! That wasn't overboard. That was an automatic warp to Grand Row. Yes! An escape spell. A warp spell. A return spell. This late in the game. Yeah, we're almost done actually. I know it's amazing. Allow me to look at my handy dandy chart. Yes, by doing two of the threes slots in the air magic, warp back to Granville for ten magic. Or at uh, hit points. Not too shabby of a deal, really. Because there are some really powerful spells, in fact, the most powerful in the game, when you combine air and water. Let's see if I get the right combination this time. 
or if it keeps warping me back. I need to refer to my other chart. Aha, there we go. I actually have to start with water, then I can go to air. So example, if I did a water 3, air 3, and say another air 3, you get boom for 221 attack power. That is amazing on a snake. But yes, it cost 56 hit points. Oof. That's a lot of hit points. Now remember when I say there is a way to circumvent this. Yes, let's start out with a water 3 and put a square, any square in the middle. And then end up with air 3 spell. Hey, that's pretty good. So let's mess around a little more with damage. With these wonderful, wonderful new air spells. Air. Air. Like I said, there's other transportation spells with the magic of air. Hey, let's go dungeon. Sure, why not? In a random dungeon. If I cast... Start with an air 3 spell. And then... A number 2. Warps me back to the beginning of the dungeon. Nice, nice. What if I just want to go one floor back? A three and a one. Well, obviously I'm not. One floor number two, that's a problem. Well, a three and a one warps you back one floor in a dungeon. So yes, anything that starts with a three will warp you in one of three degrees. Won't work in caves though. Take note of that. And how handy we need these, because I'm going to need to level up more, and going back floors without having to transfer the whole thing is a good idea. <laughs> 